Dominic Romano knows how to follow the money in an entertainment story because Dominic Romano is a corporate and entertainment attorney, partner and founder of, of Romano Law. So, Dominic, when they talk about the blind side uh, being worth several hundred million dollars, can you talk me through why Michael Orr says that the family and the children, the other children in the family, got paid buckets of money, upwards of millions each, and he got nothing. How does that sound to you? Does it sound like they could have orchestrated a deal like that? No, it's highly unlikely. The budget of the movie is around, I think, 29 million. It did gross 300 million, but the subjects of the film, the people portrayed in the film, typically only receive a small fraction of that. Michael Luz, the, the writer, would have had to basically they would have had to option his life right so they paid the writer some money and and he according to the the, the Tuies, according to Sean Tui, gave the family some money but we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars split amongst five people we're not talking about millions very little of that 300 million in gross receipts goes to the subjects of a film in Hollywood accounting it's a very small percentage and we talk about profits, it's net profits. It's a very small, relatively small amount of money compared to the whole figure that you're referring to. So we hear, have so here, this is a sad you story. Probably, you probably, right away as a lawyer, also follow the money. And the sure. book was dropped, I believe, on the same day. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did Michael Orr's book drop on the same day the lawsuit did? It dropped on Friday. The book came out on Friday. The lawsuit comes out on Monday. Interesting timing. Okay. Now, Marty Singer is saying, look, look, this is not the first time he's, he's found out about this conservatorship. He knew in 2020, he knew in 21, according to, uh, according to his brother, the, uh, the son, the, the, the birth son of, of the Tuies. And, and according to Marty Singer, he's tried to shake down the family for $15 million. Now, you know, I have some friends, some lawyers I've been texting with about the story, my EO lawyers this afternoon. And, and one of them made an interesting point. It, it's interesting that a man who had a long NFL career, presumably had sophisticated agents, managers, uh, attorneys, is only coming to the realization that he signed a conservatorship the, the business day after his book comes out? One wonders about the timing of that. It's a battle of millionaires, One as wonders, you pointed that's... out before. It's a sad story, though. Money getting that's in the, the way of a family. Polite way of saying, that's a polite way of saying BS. Um, <laughs> you're right. So, now, I just wanted to ask you about life rights, because, you know, people talk about um, net profits, uh, box office receipts, mm -hmm. life rights, back end, and it's kind of Greek to people who aren't in your business. What does it all mean when it comes to what those people deserve for their stories to be told and what the movie would actually pay v versus what the movie makes? Great question. It takes a lot of people to make a film. And so if you Google what are life rights, you're going to see that basically those are the rights of the subject, the person who the, the movie is about, uh, image and, and likeness, being granted to the filmmaker so that they may make a dramatization. Now, it's important to remember that it's a dramatization, right? It's based on a true story. It's not the actual true story. So there are certain artistic liberties that are taken. But then there are directors, actors get paid a, a ton of money. Um, the people, hair and makeup, there, there are hundreds of people on a film set. So when you talk, and there are producers that, that invested the risk capital in the first place in order for the film to be made. So when you're talking about the subjects, you're talking about a very small subsection of the entire whole of the picture. They're only making, typically, uh, maybe 2.5% of the direct going in budget. If there's no author, then there are screenwriters and there are other participants. So when you talk about net, uh, at the end of the day, very a very small amount of that big number goes to the actual subjects of the movie, the people who the movie's about. So, you know, I used to, as a kid, see the little tagline saying, inspired by true events, and I would let out a big sigh and feel very inspired that I'm seeing something that's true. And it's actually pretty clever. It's a clever way of saying, eh, we take liberty because we want to entertain you more than we want to teach you. So I, I figured that's always one of those very important lines that, you know, the rest of us just think is really exciting. Hey, Dominic, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Great to be here, Ashley. Dominic Romano joining us live tonight.